This video covers filling out a product observational label for a PDS4 archive. In this video we will cover the wide variety of observations that can be included in an archive and how to fill out a product observational label. We will be using the Oxygen XML editor to view the label file and PDS4 viewer to view the contents of the file. Feel free to pause or go back in the video at any time. Product observational labels describe the files that contain the data included in your archive. They can describe many types of data including images, movies, spectra, tabular data such as character or binary tables, and one, two, or three dimensional data arrays. Every data product within your archive must have an associated product observational label. Every PDS4 label requires an identification area class, which provides identifying information about a product so that it can be distinguished from others and referenced properly. The class also has attributes which provide metadata on the product and allow the data to be found using search tools. Identification area begins with a few required attributes, logical identifier, version ID, title, information model version, and product class. The logical identifier attribute, called a lid, is a unique string that identifies your product and spells out what collection and bundle it belongs to. Validation tools will check to see if a lid is structured correctly and, if you're validating an entire collection or bundle, that there are no naming conflicts internal to the collection or bundle. The version ID attribute, called a vid, tracks different archival versions of a product. If you need to update a product that already appears in the archive, you must increment the version ID. The format is two integers separated by a period, for example, version 2.1. Increment the leading integer for major changes and the integer following the decimal for minor changes. Each node has its own guidelines on what constitutes a major or minor revision. Data providers should consult their node representative for more guidance. The combination of logical identifier and version ID make a lid vid, a string that uniquely identifies different versions of the same product in cases where you need to distinguish between them. See the training website for more details on lids and lid vids, such as how to formulate them, and talk to your node representative about ensuring your lids are unique. Within a product label, different version IDs are tracked through the modification history, which appears later in identification area. The title attribute is a human-readable string to help users figure out what product they're looking at. While it is strongly encouraged, the title is not required to be unique, though it should be descriptive. Information model version is the version of the PDS4 schema against which your label will be validated. It can be found at the beginning of the .xsd file for your label. You can copy the highlighted section into your internet browser to see the .xsd file. If you enter the wrong version number, validation tools will fail and not find any other errors. If you have any questions about version number, contact your PDS node representative. The product class attribute must be product observational. Following those attributes is the Citation Information class, which provides basic publication information so that a product can be cited or registered in a catalog, such as the ADS. If all the information is the same across all the products in the collection containing this product, the Citation Information class isn't needed in each label. In that case, it is better to have only one instance of the class in the collection label. The Citation Information class has two required attributes description and publication year. There are also several optional attributes. You can include one each of author list, DOI, and editor list, which we strongly recommend. You can also include as many entries of the keyword attribute as needed. The last section under identification area in this label is the modification history. This class is optional, but is highly recommended for products that have been updated and have a version ID higher than 1.0. Each time the product is updated, add a Modification Detail class here. Modification Detail has three required attributes, Modification Date, Version ID, and Description. 
Modification date is the date you modified the product. For the sake of consistency, be sure to maintain a chronological order between modification dates if you have multiple modification detail entries. Version ID is the version number for this particular modification of the product. The latest version ID in your modification history should match the version ID given above in identification area. Be sure to increment your version ID with each successive modification detail. Finally, in the description attribute, write a description of the changes made to the product that warranted a new version. The next section after identification area is the observation area. This class is required and contains fields that describe the key features of the observation. The required classes for observation area are time coordinates, investigation area, observing system, and target identification. Optional classes include primary results summary, mission area, and discipline area. There are two required attributes for time coordinates, start date time and stop date time. Time coordinates defines the beginning and end of the observation in question, such as what time a camera shutter opened and closed. The format is in Coordinated Universal Time, or UTC, and must have the Z at the end. An optional but highly recommended inclusion in observation area is the primary results summary. This class contains attributes that help in high-level searches across the PDS archive. Our example includes the required attributes purpose and processing level and the optional class science facets. Both purpose and processing level have a list of defined standard values. For purpose, these are calibration, checkout, engineering, navigation, observation geometry, and science. For processing level, they are calibrated, derived, partially processed, raw, and telemetry. Science Facets has two optional attributes, Wavelength Range and Domain, and a required attribute, Discipline Name. Each of these attributes has a list of available values on the Standard Values Quick Reference page at the PDS website. See link in the description below. The next class is Investigation Area. This class is required and is used to identify the mission or observing campaign that produced the data described by the label. There are two required attributes, name and type, and one required class, internal reference. Every mission or observing campaign should have a label that describes the details of the investigation. This label is describing what PDS calls the context object for the investigation. The name attribute within investigation area should match the name of the related investigation context object. Type must have one of the four following values, mission, observing campaign, individual investigation, and other investigation. This value should also match the type value in the related investigation context object. The related context object must be referenced one more time in internal reference. The two required attributes are lid reference and reference type. The lid reference is the logical identifier for the context object. For observation area, the reference type has to be data to investigation. You can also include an optional comment in internal reference if needed. The required class observing system documents instruments, hosts, or telescopes associated with the investigation. There are two optional attributes, name and description. Use these to include known search terms that may not be included otherwise. The observing system component class is required and can be repeated as needed. In our example, there are two instances listed one for the host spacecraft, MAVEN, and one for the instrument on the spacecraft, the Extreme Ultraviolet Monitor. Within Observing System Component, there are two required attributes, name and type, and one optional attribute, description. If there is an associated context object for this component, the name should match with that context object, and you must include an internal reference to link that context object. In our example, all of the components listed have context objects associated with them and therefore all have internal reference listed. The last required class in observation area is target identification, which documents the object observed. Usually this will be a natural solar system object such as a comet, planet, asteroid, moon, etc. 
Target identification has two required attributes, name and type, and two optional attributes, alternate designation and description. Names should be the full, formal name of the target. Your node representative can provide you with the exact format of the name of your target. Type must come from a list provided in the Standard Values Quick Reference available on the PDS website. Use the description attribute to add more search terms as needed. Similar to observing system component and investigation area, if there is a PDS product that provides additional information about your target, provide an internal reference that cites it here. Again, the lid reference and type are required. The type should be data to target for observation area. In our example, Mars was observed. Mars has a related context object and therefore we have included the internal reference that points to Mars's context object label. There are two remaining optional classes for observation area, mission area and discipline area. Add a mission area class to reference any relevant mission dictionaries. More information on local dictionaries is available on the PDS training site or through your node representative. Use the Discipline Area class to reference any relevant discipline dictionaries. In our example, the Discipline Area is used to reference the Particle Dictionary, which contains attributes that identify particle parameters in a PDS4 product to supplement the information provided in the Primary Results Summary and in order to support enhanced data discovery. This example also includes the Alternate Values Dictionary, which contains classes that describe sets of data values that are interchangeable with each other. For more information on using Discipline Dictionaries, contact your Node representative. After Observation Area, include the optional Reference List class in your label to allow you to make logical connections between different products within the PDS. This allows you to move between them if necessary or if useful. List all internal references, if any, first. External references, if there are any, are listed second. You may include as many of each type of reference as you like. Classes for reference list include internal reference, external reference, source product internal, and source product external. When including either an internal reference or source product internal, the length, in this case, a lid reference, will be to some product within the PDS. While PDS highly recommends that all relevant references be included in your PDS archive, if there is useful information permanently available outside the PDS that you would like to reference, use an external reference class here. This example includes both internal and external references. For more information on reference lists, see the reference list document on the PDS training website linked below in the description. File Area Observational is a required class for all product observational label files. It contains the essential file description class, File, followed by data structure descriptions. Each observational product must have at least one file area observational class and may have more than one if the core observational data are contained in multiple files. While most of a label records metadata about the scientific content of a product, the file area observational class contains metadata about the file itself. This includes information such as the file name and size, as well as the data structures in the file, in our example, arrays. This metadata is necessary for tools to properly read a file and access the data inside. There are a variety of different data structures that can be described within the file area observational class. The details of the various data structures are provided in separate documentation and videos. See the description below for links to the file area documentation. There you will find information on each data structure. Thank you for watching our video on filling out a product observational label. In this video we covered the wide variety of observations that can be included in an archive and how to fill out a product observational label.